until yesterday, PC was on update 1.14 two updates behind that of the consoles of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, while it was never specifically stated, I'd be willing to bet that it was an intentional delay. And the public reasoning that we saw was for further testing and tuning. Although, we should also consider the reason of for further protection against data mining. Let's consider this. In the past week, we've seen a free bundle with Twitch Prime and a major content update for Blackout, which that in particular, we only knew about as of Monday. The game files for the PC update of 1.16 showed all of those things with promotional artwork and things that would show up in game in that update in particular. 1.16, well, that came out a week ago at this point for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That would have literally destroyed the surprise announcement of Alcatraz and given an advanced heads up about the Twitch Prime pack as well that came as sort of a surprise for those that were interested in it. But littered throughout the game files are plenty of assets that showed the map of Alcatraz, the new weapon of the Blundergat in said map, the Twitch Prime pack, and so on and so forth. What about what else it showed that we haven't seen just yet? Because as with every update, there is seemingly something that points towards the future that we can look forward to. And so while the update itself doesn't show off a terrible amount of new data mined info and groundbreaking things like a complete overhaul of the game to a fundamental level, there's still a lot of cool things to discuss and some that may surprise you. So of course, today we're gonna break all that down here for this. But as with our last discussion of data mined content, two things to preface this video. First, because every one of these assets are still in the game files and have not been publicly revealed or released yet, they're still technically intellectual property of Activision as well as Treyarch, so for that reason, I unfortunately can't put any of the images on screen, but I can link them down below, to which it will take you to our friend Josh's Twitter, to which is our second thing here. Secondly, go toss him a follow and show him some love if you have a Twitter, because none of this would be at all out there if it wasn't for him and the data mining that he did on this. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start on the more minor end of things here at this one. The first one might not necessarily be everyone's cup of tea, but it's something that we probably inferred was going to be coming. That being, some new supply crate and reserve bundle icons were found in the game files of this update. We ended up seeing that we had icons for the denominations of 10 reserve cases, not crates, but just the cases, and then 5, 10, 15, and 20 crates of 3 bundles that were found in here as well. As for when these will be introduced, your guess is honestly as good as mine. We've seen a couple of bundles like this pop up as of recently. Last week it was the Home Wrecker and the Triple Play with the Mark II weapon variant in there as well for that near half price points of the game itself. Then we ended up seeing that as of yesterday's update, we ended up getting a 20 tier bundle in which you ended up not buying 20 cases or 20 crates, but instead 20 tiers for what would have easily been described as just 50% off. So it's a 20 tier bundle for 1000 COD points. So that was added in and so therefore any of these things could happen anytime soon. It seems like we're getting a bundle a week now at this point which love it or hate it is just the simple matter of the fact so maybe these are going to be introduced within the next upcoming weeks or something like that where you could end up seeing those bundles introduced. The next thing, though, is one that we already knew was happening and was actually confirmed by Treyarch as of yesterday's patch notes. They ended up prefacing it by talking about some of the content still coming up and all things considered within MP, and that being the infected icon was officially found within the game files as well. We know that's going to be coming on the 9th or as of next Tuesday, so keep your eye out for that one. I don't think it was detailed if that one is exclusive or not to PlayStation 4 first. I don't think so. I think Bare Bones was the only one here out of this that will be, and of course, with three more game modes still up on deck and three weeks left of the event starting as of next Tuesday. It makes sense that everybody would then get that at some point, but I guess with the operation still being one week behind as well on Xbox One and PC, it could still be possible that that's delayed as well. Hopefully not though. Regardless, the next thing that was found was some imagery for Arsenal Sandstorm. It was detailed in the patch notes that again this would be coming as well, but they didn't give any specific ETA for it. If I were to guess, I'd probably say the 16th, that two week mark out from when the operation ends. That's just my personal guess, I have absolutely no clue if that's actually going to happen or not, but we ended up seeing a couple of things from this come out of it. The first of which obviously being that just key art and promo imagery that showcases the map from just like a loading screen perspective, but as stills. But then Josh actually was able to data mine and pull up the actual loading screen menu video, to which it actually showcases a little bit of how this will play out, what it will look like, and they weren't kidding when they were talking about the most obstructed views that this map variation in particular will have compared to the others. We saw that say Contraband Hurricane had a global lighting change, some weather, Seaside Sunset and Firing Range Night, not all that bad either but Arsenal Sandstorm, it actually looks like it's going to be really hard to see, especially outside. The inside portions look to be alright, obviously, because there's not a huge dust storm swirling around inside a building, 
but outside, you're not going to be able to see from end to end on that side courtyard by the waterfall. Same thing goes for the battery side as well. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this shakes up and what sort of playstyle adjustments we'll see as a result. But check that out, link in the description below. Again, it is a completely different change in terms of what you'd expect. So I'm all for jumping in and playing this whenever it comes out, but certainly excited to see that one as well whenever it may come. Other things up on deck include new skins, including some new imagery for some stuff we've already seen. Showcased in these game files detail the Crash the Getaway outfit, which we'll see coming as of April 8th on PlayStation 4 and the other platforms to follow. That's the Magnum PI Tom Selleck lookalike one that we've referenced many times here on the channel that we've seen also all the way since the promotional key art for Operation Grand Heist, but just haven't seen it introduced into the game as of yet. We also saw some other imagery for the Crash the Snitch outfit, who is surprisingly holding a Bowie knife within this image as well. Whatever that means, we don't exactly know whether it's going to be a bundle where you can end up getting the Bowie knife of some sorts, or if it's just literally a promotional image. Who knows, but it's really interesting that he's holding the Bowie knife in MP. Kind of curious about that one. Then we also end up seeing a little bit more on the Misty assets. The last data mine image and info cache that we talked about had a little bit more in terms of the actual imagery for Misty herself, but these actually are now some assets that are associated with the Misty special order, which we can presume is going to be coming on the 20th of April. That's when the next special order will be coming out after the Magnum PI Tom Selleck lookalike one. But the curious part is that if we're on a 12 day rotation, that's only gonna leave 10 days left until the next operation. So whether or not that one gets cut short or not, It'll be interesting to see if there's a rollover or if it's going to cut short, but I digress. We end up seeing that we have some new assets relating to the actual special order other contents, not necessarily Misty. We see that there's a bus depot calling card, a bus sticker, and a bus driver tag or emblem it looks like. Again, probably just bundled with that Misty character for Blackout, which you'll then have to go through a couple of tiers to end up unlocking. But that's all the basic stuff that was out of the way in terms of this, but there's one thing left that really perplexed me. One that really caught my attention because this were the files for the in-game store assets of the Operation First Strike weapons. The Titan Sandstorm, the GKS Damascus, the ICR Blinding Glory, those ones that players missed out on if they did not take part in Operation First Strike or get to tier 50, 100, or 200 at the time to get those weapons, they were seemingly lost forever. I know a lot of players speculated that they were in reserves already, but they are currently not in reserves. So if you are somebody that's grinding out reserves trying to get simply these weapons, I'll save you the time. They're not in reserves at the moment, but it seems like they may be coming back to the shop at some point or maybe reserves in the future. There were image assets for each individual signature weapon as well as the reactives as well as mastercraft. So it seems like if I were to guess, they're going to be bundled all as one like they were back in Operation First Strike where you got one, you got all three before they got separated and then sold individually in different forms on other weapons as Mastercrafts, Reactives, and then Signatures in Reserves. So the Titan Mark II, the GKS Mark II, and the ICR-7 Mark II all have their own designated files. How we end up seeing this happen is one of four different ways. It's a lot of different ways that we could think about this happening, but ultimately only one of them will happen. But here's my guesses. Firstly, I think that maybe they could be tossed in reserves. We've seen the Cap 45, the Rampart, the Koshka, the Cordite, the Swat, the Daemon, and so on. So who's to say that we don't see a Mark II or signature weapon of these weapons added into reserves as well? While well, granted, the only stipulation here that we haven't seen on those other weapons we previously just mentioned, being that they weren't ever introduced in the game organically, it would be a weird curveball to see these added into reserves as a sort of catch-up mentality, but it is possible. Then, maybe we end up seeing the ability as the second option to buy them individually. Maybe we end up seeing for six bucks, eight bucks, whatever it may be, the ability to get the signature weapon, the reactive camo, as well as the mastercraft for that weapon all in one bundled purchase. However, I'm a little bit turned off on that idea because there aren't any assets in the game that were data mined from what we have on hand that point to just those three being on sale for each weapon. Instead, I think they might be more so likely to be bundles, to which you end up seeing these assets end up having the signature, reactive, and mastercraft, plus some supply crates in the background, which make me believe that we'll see those three things available, with unfortunately a bundle of supply crates of, say, 10 jacking up the price even further. So you might see each one of these bundles being 20 bucks each or something like that, which I'm hoping it doesn't go that far, but wouldn't surprise me. Another thing that's also curious is that maybe we end up seeing First Strike bundles introduced. 
by which I mean you end up getting either one of those Titan GKS or ICR signature reactive and master crafts, or maybe all three plus a bundle of loot from first strike because one of the supply crates in those images ends up having a first strike sticker on the crate which could end up maybe pointing to the fact that we have a loot pool, sort of like a collection in previous games, where it's only of those stream items that were added in, because the first strike reserves are actually still part of the reserve pool right now, but the in-stream items were not. So maybe that's something that it's a sort of collection of sorts you end up having the option to buy as well. But regardless, there's definitely some interesting thoughts here behind this, especially for those that didn't play during First Strike or didn't get to tier 50, 100, or 200, because you may have the option to get these items you missed out on previously, again in Black Ops 4 in the upcoming future. Again, whether you like it or not, that's just something that I'm letting you guys know about it, especially if they're completely upcharged with bundles of supply crates that players don't necessarily want. That's going to be a problem, but it's interesting to see that these are introduced and maybe we'll see some things like previous DLC weapons introduced at a later point in the year as well. But that said, that's the data mine information and things that were air quote leaked, I guess you could say, from this PC update of 1.16. So that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to here out of this? Or are you looking forward to the signature reactive and master crafts of the ICR Titan and GKS coming back from Operation First Strike? Are you looking forward to Arsenal Sandstorm? Whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, MP, Blackout, Zombies. We got you covered with the best of updates, news, information tips, tricks, all that good stuff. So if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube, practically live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, that's it. Now, thank you guys all so much for watching. Mazda Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.